Hey guys, in today's video, we're learning all about JavaScript loops. Before proceeding, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update. So without further ado, let's begin and look at what's in store for you. So we're going to be covering topics like for loop, while loop, which also includes the do while loop. And then we're going to learn about breaking out of a loop and then we'll see how to skip a loop cycle. Now, before jumping into the for loop, let's first understand what exactly a loop is, right? So a loop is basically a programming construct that executes a piece of code as long as a certain condition is met. All right. And there are two different types of loops. We have entry control loops and exit control loops. Now, what exactly are entry control loops? Now, these are the loops where the test condition is checked before executing the piece of code. For example, you have the for loop and the while loop. So in their case, before entering the loop, the condition is checked and only if the condition is met, it enters the loop and executes the code. All right. When it comes to exit control loops, the test condition is checked after the loop has been executed. All right. So in this case, the loop at least gets executed. I mean, the code in the loop gets executed at least once. So the example for this is the do while loop. All right, with this basic knowledge, let's go ahead and learn about the different loops. So the first loop is the for loop. All right, so what exactly is a for loop? This is the basic logic and the flowchart in front of you. So what exactly happens is that, say for example, you want to print the word looping, say 10 times, right? So what you can do is you can start and you can have a for loop which goes from 0 to 9. And then you increase the number by 1 every time you print the loop. Once it's equal to 10 or even greater than 10, it ends the loop. Right? So let me help you understand this better with an example. So let's go to our editor that is VS Code. Here I've created a folder called demo underscore loops within which I've created a file called for loops. All right. So now let's just write down our initial code for HTML that is HTML and then I have a head tag within which I say JavaScript loops. All right. Now I have a body tag within which I give a heading for clearer understanding. Let me have a heading say JavaScript for loops. All right. Let me just call it for loop. Now let's have the script tag within which I'll have a variable say x and now we we'll have the for loop so we say for x equals 0 x less than 5 x plus plus within which I say console dot log of x so basically what happens is now you have the first variable which is called the counter variable. Now this keeps track of how many times the code is being executed. Right? And next, i less than 5 is the condition. Now the loop keeps executing as long as the condition is met. And lastly, the counter variable is incremented. And usually it's incremented by 1. Right? So here we've done the same thing. And inside the loop, we print the value of x. All right, so let me save the file and then execute it. All right, it's printed JavaScript loops here. Let me just go back. Okay, my bad. I missed out on the title tag. So this has to be enclosed within the title tag. So let me just change it here. Now let's save this. Let's go back and just refresh the page and that is it. So whatever is in the title tag basically appears here. All right. So now since we are printing the value of x on our console, 
we'll have to inspect our element. So let's go here and here let's check on console. And here you can see all the values have been printed from 0 to 4. Alright, now this is a simple for loop. So next up is a while loop. Now the logic is similar to that of a for loop. So first the condition is checked and if the condition holds true then the code is executed and if it is false it terminates. Alright, so moving on let's understand the general syntax. So here first you have the variable whose value keeps changing and then you have the ending condition which is basically the maximum value a variable can reach. Alright, so let's go back to our VS code and here for better understanding let me just change this to javascript while loop. Alright, let's just delete this and here let's initialize the value of x to 1. And now I say while x less than or equal to 5 within braces I say console.log with x and then I increment the value of x. Alright, so let me save this and let's execute the file. Alright, so it says JavaScript while loop and let's inspect and here in our console it displays the values of x. Alright, so according to the logic x is initially initialized to 1 and the value gets executed once it enters the while loop. Alright, it's incremented and then checked every time until the value reaches 6 right and then it breaks from the loop since the value does not hold true and then it terminates. So this is the logic behind the while loop. Next up is the do while loop. Now here as you can see first the code is executed and then the condition is checked. If the condition is true then the code execution continues and if it falls it's terminated. Alright so this is an exit control loop. Also, in an exit control loop, the code is executed at least once. So let's go back to our VS code. And here, let me just delete this. Now let's initialize x to say 15. Alright? And now I use the do keyword within which I write the code. So first I'm going to print the value of x console dot log of x and then I increase my value and here I mention my test condition which is while x less than say 10 all right so according to the logic initially the value is x and once it enters the loop here it should print the value of x which is 15 all right and then it increments the value but once it comes out of the loop it checks for the condition here the condition says less than 10 but since x is not less than 10 it prints the value x that is 15 and then terminates all right so let's save this and execute it so let me execute this and here Let's check the console. So there we go. It prints 15. So what it does is that it prints the value 15 first and then checks the condition. Now, let's go ahead and change the value of x to say 5. Alright. So now it enters the loop and then it prints the value of x and then increments it. And when it comes out of the loop and checks the condition, as long as the value of x remains less than 10, it prints it. Okay, so let's save this. Go back here and let's refresh the page. And here you can see the values 5 to 9 are printed. So this is how the do while loop works. Moving on to the next concept, breaking out of a loop. Now as the name suggests, 
break is the keyword that is used to break out of a loop. Now here is a simple code for you. So according to the logic, it prints the values between 1 to 10. And say at the value 5, you want to break out of the loop. You can simply use the keyword break. So let's go back to our VS code. And here, let me just make it simple and say, for x equals 1, x less than or equal to 10, let's increment it and within the loop, let's display the value x on the console and then we're going to check for the condition if x equals 5, alright? So if x equals 5, we break out of the loop. So let's save the file and execute it. And there you go. It's displayed the values from 1 to 5. So basically the code inside the for loop is executed and once the value of x reaches 5, it breaks from the loop. Simple, right? Alright, so let's move on. Next up, we have skipping a loop cycle. Alright, so here what exactly we do is we make use of a keyword continue to skip a particular loop cycle. Say in this case, we have a for loop which displays the values of i ranging from 1 to 10. However, we want to skip the cycle when it reaches the value 3. So what we do is we make use of the keyword continue here. So basically, it displays 1 and 2 and skips the third cycle and then directly displays 4. All right. So let me show you in our VS Code editor here. Let me just remove this and say if x equals 5, I'm going to continue. All right. After which, I'm going to say console.log of x. So let me save this and then execute it. So here, let me refresh the page and there we go. As you can see, it displays 1, 2, 3 and 4 and the fifth cycle is skipped. Alright, and the rest of the digits are displayed. So that is how you can skip a loop. I highly suggest you also practice all of this and then play around with loops to get a better understanding. So with that, we come to the end of this session. I really hope this demo tutorial helped you. If you have any doubts, let us know in the comment section below. We're going to come out with more videos on JavaScript, so watch out for that. Until then, keep learning and stay tuned to Simply Learn. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.